Leave your iron at home and don't expect a crew member to be your new BFF. We're talking all about the weird rules on Royal Green Cruise up next. Hey everyone, it's Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com and rules and regulations are not the most exciting things to learn about when you're researching your cruise vacation, but these are important things to keep in mind when you're packing and planning that perfect cruise vacation. The first weird Royal Caribbean rule you should be aware of is you can't smoke on your balcony. Now, I won't go into the health issues that smoking can have on your body, but Royal Caribbean is very strict about where you can and cannot smoke, including your balcony. Besides the health issues that smoking has, smoking presents a more clear and present danger for cruise lines in the form of it being a fire hazard. If a smoker thinks they're going to be able to have a relaxing cigarette on their ship balcony, they would be mistaken. Cruise lines despise smoking because it's a major fire hazard and people tend to flick their butts out into the ocean. Throwing your cigarette into the ocean is pollution and some people have actually been thrown off cruise ships for such things. More importantly, that cigarette butt can fly back on board due to all the winds going on and that creates a fire hazard. So if you do smoke, Royal Caribbean has designated smoking areas on board where it is only permissible to do so, but you absolutely will not be able to smoke on board your balcony. The next weird cruise rule on Royal Caribbean is you have to take part in the muster drill. The muster drill is a really weird sounding safety drill and it requires all passengers to be fully aware of all the safety procedures on what to do in the case of an emergency in which the ship has to be evacuated. The muster drill is conducted on the first day of the cruise and as I said, everybody has to do it. The good news is it's about to get a whole lot less annoying. Royal Caribbean has actually released new details, something they call Muster 2.0, which allows you to conduct your muster drill on your own via your smartphone device or the stateroom television in your cabin. Either way, it'll be more self-service and it will only require you to check in at your muster station to make sure that you know where it is, but there's a lot less of the having to stop everything you're doing, go down to your muster station, and then wait in line with everybody else. But it is still kind of a weird thing that you just don't do almost anywhere else. The next weird rule is you can't take food with you off the ship. The idea of maybe getting some sandwiches, fruit, and other snacks from the buffet with you might sound like a great idea when you're about to go off on shore for a shore excursion, but it's actually against the law in a lot of places. Food that isn't prepackaged is often not allowed on the ship due to agricultural regulations imposed by various countries. Some cruisers might get away with breaking the rules because security generally is tighter getting back off on the ship than it is off of it. But in countries where the law is strictly enforced, passengers can actually face a fine or even worse if they find themselves in the hands of the local authorities because they brought some food off the ship. So regardless of how minor sneaking a few bananas in your bag might seem, this is one of those cruise ship rules that isn't worth chancing. And in some countries, we've even seen dogs sniffing passengers' belongings to see if they're bringing agriculture off the ship. So basically, don't do it. Next up, you can't bring pool floats to either use on board your Royal Caribbean cruise or at one of their private islands. Pool floats sound like a great idea, except Royal Caribbean's cruise ship pools are really small. So if you're going to be bringing a pool float on there, it's just not fair to other passengers. Not to mention, of course, there's always the issue for the lifeguards of being able to see everybody and it creates a health issue with somebody possibly being trapped underneath one as they try to come up for air. So that's not allowed. And even on Royal Caribbean's private islands of Perfect Day at Cuckoo Key or Labadee, they're not allowed either. So don't bring them. You'll still have plenty of fun without them, but leave them at home. The next weird Royal Caribbean rule is you can't bring on any appliances. If there's one item that I see confiscated all the time by other Royal Caribbean guests, it's household appliances. Coffee makers, clothing irons, travel steamers, electric kettles, and hot plates are not allowed to be brought on board, period. These items pose a fire hazard, so you cannot bring any of them on board, especially those flat irons for clothing. It's the most common thing people try to bring on board a ship and are confiscated. Now, of course, you might be wondering, well, what am I supposed to do about wrinkles? And one option is you can send them out for laundry. That does cost extra. There is a press and fold option, as well as traditional dry cleaning. Both of those do have an additional cost. Another option is to do a more DIY approach where you might have a wrinkle release spray, which you can bring on board, or even some people will hang their clothes in their shower line and then steam them with the shower on, and perhaps that will help as well. Another trick for helping with those laundry issues is look for something called the wash and fold special. 
During your cruise, probably around maybe day three or four, you might see in your cruise compass an option where you can pack a plastic bag full of as much laundry as you want for a flat fee. This is great for things like underwear and t-shirts and even shorts and bathing suits that you want to be able to reuse but aren't willing to pay a fortune for. Usually the wash and fold special comes at a flat cost and and if you're a repeat Royal Caribbean cruiser, you might even get an additional discount on top of that. Talk to your stateroom attendant while you're on board the ship. They can spell out the exact benefits and what that deal entails. Speaking of things you're not allowed to bring on board a ship because it's a fire hazard, let's add power strips slash extension cords slash surge protectors as things you can't bring on board. The issue with these items is just like appliances, they're a potential fire hazard and Royal Caribbean security just can't really determine the difference between a power strip and a surge protector and whatnot. So they just ban the whole thing altogether and extension cords are not allowed, including power strips or surge protectors to leave them at home. You know, I have seen sometimes people being able to get them on board depending on who's doing the security screening, but they're not allowed on there. So what you wanna do instead of bringing a power strip or a surge protector is just bring a USB hub. Let's face it, everything you're charging is gonna be done via USB anyway. And to bring a USB hub where you plug something into the wall and then you get, you know, two, three, eight, USB outlets, that is allowed and that's a lot safer and you won't have to worry about somebody confiscating it for the duration of your cruise. So leave the power strips or extension cords at home. Next, let's talk about pool rules because there are a couple of weird ones. Number one, if your child is not fully potty trained and or wearing a diaper, they are not allowed in Royal Caribbean's pools. On some ships, there is a baby splash pad area in which babies who are wearing diapers or and or just not fully potty trained can go in there by themselves and be able to enjoy some aquatic fun, but you cannot bring babies in diapers into any of the pools. In addition to that, Royal Caribbean requires guests to be at least 16 years old or older in order to swim in the ship's solarium pool or jacuzzis. The solarium is the adults only area of the ship. And if you're not 16 years or older, you're not allowed to go in there to be able to enjoy those pool facilities as well. So it's important to be aware of those age restrictions, especially for the babies. If you're picking a ship, make sure it has a splash away bay and or some other baby splash area where you know there's going to be a spot on the ship for the babies to go and be able to splash around and enjoy their time. Another weird Royal Caribbean rule that you might not find on land is you may not be allowed to head out on a cruise if you're pregnant. Royal Caribbean doesn't allow pregnant people who are in their third trimester to head out to sea. Specifically, the guideline states that pregnant women who have entered their 24th week of estimated fetal gestational age at any time during the cruise should not be eligible to sail with the ship. So, if you have entered your 24th week of pregnancy or greater at any time during the cruise, you'll be prohibited from sailing. And this has to do with the fact that, of course, if the baby would happen to be born, Royal Caribbean's cruise ships are not really equipped properly to deliver a baby. And when they want to make sure that there's any issues there, they want to have uh, the proper staff on board, including an obstetrician or a gynecologist that can help with if there's a unstable or poorly controlled and potentially life-threatening situation in regards to the birth. So bottom line is, if your pregnancy is entering the 24th week or greater at any point during the cruise, you're simply not allowed to sail. Something else you should be aware of is you can't bring a hoverboard on board your Royal Caribbean cruise. I don't know why anyone would want to bring one on there. Maybe I'm just not of that age to do so. Yeah, I'm getting old, but you're not allowed to ride a hoverboard on your Royal Caribbean ship. This is to protect uh, other passengers from collisions primarily. Uh, so you're not allowed to do that. Royal Caribbean does allow you to bring on board certain items like skateboards, surfboards, and bicycles, but you just can't use them on board the ship. But hoverboards specifically called out as not being allowed to bring on board your Royal Caribbean cruise. So leave them at home and then ride around your neighborhood when you get back. And the last weird Royal Caribbean rule is don't expect to become friends with any of the crew members. As is the case with most cruise lines, Royal Caribbean says that while employees are friendly, outgoing, and helpful, Passengers should not misinterpret their friendliness. This policy goes on as the crew members are prohibited from engaging in physical relationships with guests and are also not permitted to socialize with guests beyond their professional duties. So while the crew members are definitely there to make sure you have a great time and, and it's okay to strike up a conversation with them and be friendly, you can't expect them to go on shore excursions with you, invite them over to your stateroom, or otherwise engage in anything that's really beyond the confines of what their daily duties are. The bottom line with this rule is don't look for love with the crew members. Keep it to non-crew only. Heck, better yet, just wait till you get home and then back to eHarmony. 
So there you have 10 weird Royal Caribbean rules that you should be aware of when you go on your cruise ship. And listen, some of these rules may seem a little more obvious, like the smoking rule, but these are kind of weird ones. And in a lot of cases, they just don't match up with anything directly that you would find on land. So be aware of them. Don't break any of them. And that way you'll have a great Royal Caribbean cruise. And speaking of great, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it great. And if you did, make sure you like this video, subscribe to our channel, and most importantly, make sure you turn on your notifications so that way YouTube lets you know when I have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com, and we'll talk again real soon.